Buju Anin. My name is Tanya Talaga. I'm the author of Seven Fallen Feathers. Seven Fallen Feathers is a book about seven First Nations high school students who left their home communities to travel to Thunder Bay to go to high school. They had to leave their home, their language, their parents, their culture, everything that they knew and travel 400, 500, 600 kilometers away from home in order to go to Thunder Bay because there were no high schools for them in their home communities. So if they wanted to pursue a high school education, the right of any other Canadian child, they had to move to Thunder Bay. I think that my own background helps with the writing of the book and the telling of the story. I come from, uh, from an interesting family. My father was Polish um, and uh, he passed away in the late 1990s. And uh, my mother, she was raised by her great grandparents outside of Fort William First Nation um, in a little place called Wraith. It was a community of mostly laborers and trappers. And um, that's, where, that's where she spent most of her childhood, Wraith and Graham. It's an hour down the road from Thunder Bay on your way to Kenora. I think that, that it helps that I know both of these worlds. Um, it gives you a, a greater understanding and a greater feeling when you're talking to everyone, all the families that are part of this, this book, and you realize that we're all connected and all of us share similar stories in different ways. And I think that that really helps get the, the point of, uh, of Seven Fallen Feathers across. And it, um, it helps me tell the story because I think I, I know it a little bit more. When I was writing the book, I actually thought I was, uh, I remember clearly I thought I was finished. I wrote about the seven kids and it was, uh, it was a lot of work and I finally got to the end. And then um, before I could hand the book in, sadly on May 6th, two more teenagers um, went missing and their bodies were both found in the McIntyre uh, water and the rivers um, within two weeks of them disappearing. So, What's happening in Thunder Bay is uh, still happening. There is an increased awareness about what's going on up there and there is an investigation right now into the Thunder Bay Police Force for systemic racism. There's also an uh, investigation into the Thunder Bay Police Services Board because it's their job to police the police. Murray Sinclair is handling that specific investigation and a, um, a, a group that's um, affiliated with the Ministry of the Attorney General in Ontario uh, at, operates at an arm's length of uh, the ministry is conducting an investigation into the police force and I'm eagerly awaiting both of those reports. I truly hope that Seven Fallen Feathers equals change. I really hope that the lives of the students touch people and that people understand that we're not just talking about statistics here, we're talking about seven children that were loved by their families and by their communities and their lives mattered. And I, I hope that by telling their stories that Canadians are touched and I hope that our politicians are touched as well and that they realize that what has been going on for centuries in this country really has to end. I mean, the fact is that uh, children can't go to a high school that has that have cafeterias or libraries or equipped classrooms or fully trained teachers in their home communities so they have to travel so far away from their homes and their families and their languages in order to go to school. This is 2018. It's, that's incredible to me that we still don't have adequate schools. It should be a, a, a basic right for all children in this country, Indigenous or not. If you're under the age of 18 you should have the right to go to high school and I, I hope that people are getting that message and I do think though that educators are really getting that message. One of the, um, one of the things I never really thought would happen but it, it's actually the teaching community, the education community has come behind the book and they really are um, on social media, they're talking about it a lot. I'm speaking to lots of teachers and uh, schools about the book and that's, that's been a, a wonderful thing because I think it's the teachers that are actually going to take this book forward along with the youth and the communities and just really get the message out there that it's, it's time to treat all of the children in this country equally.